right, the week is finally upon us. It is the week of NCAAs. In the sport of college swimming, there is no bigger week. It is probably one of the most stressful, rewarding, and fun times for all of these athletes. To add a little bit of fun to this week, I decided to jump on a live stream with Brett Hawk and the swimsuit guy as we talked about some of our best takes, who's gonna win the swimming title, and just general hot takes in the sport of swimming. This is definitely something that's lacking in the sport of swimming. I hope to do a lot more hot takes in the future, and I hope you guys all enjoy these. So make sure to drop your swimming hot takes down below. This will be a compilation of my favorite moments from the video, so if you guys like this type of video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Without further ado, let's get into these spicy hot takes. All right, there we go. We're live, mate. Hey, guys. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Kyle, thanks for joining us, man. Where are you coming from? I'm coming in. Oh, looking looking fresh, Sonny. Oh, Sonny, Sonny, Sonny. Is that your prediction already? Are you, are you going with a, a prediction? There it is. <laughs> My uh, Cavaliers cap. Oh, man. He's, he's coming out ready. Coming out strong there on a is. Monday morning. Nice, nice. How do you think the Bears will do? This is the first year under Coach Durden for the women's team. I've liked what I've seen out of the out of the the Golden Bears this year. Um, you know, definitely a big transition for them, um, but they they got a great coach, and I know it. Um, Dave Durden, if you ask me, is the best coach in the coach in the world. Those girls, um, they've been swimming well this year. They swam well at Pac-12s. Um, I'm excited to see what they can do at the NCAA level. I don't know if they're going to be in the contest for the team title this year, but I know coming down the line, um, Durden's, Durden's building something good for them. All right, I am asking you, why is Dave Durden the best coach in the world? I think it is his world-class expertise, knowledge of the sport, um, and the experience of the athletes that have come through him, that have taught him a great thing or two about the sport. And I mm. think that he's really been able to take all of his learnings and you know, I think he is. I think he's got a great mind, really. And mm. one of the best things I think Dave Durden does is motivates his athletes. He's like yeah. the best cheerleader for his athletes, and yeah. uh, rubs off on all of us. Yeah. All right. Listen, we're going to get into this. It's women's NCAA prediction show. Uh, we've got a lot to get through. Listen, 800 free relay. Yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting one. Um, I'm just going to go. It's it's hard to make predictions when you got Tyler <laughs> Fenwick in the uh, in the comments section. Now we're gonna, we're gonna have to pick UVA for everything. But on this occasion, <laughs> on this occasion, I think I'm gonna uh, give uh, the first event of the meet to the Stanford women. I think Stanford are gonna take this one. And the reason I brought up how many swims you can do is that if UVA were to put Kate Douglas, Alex Walsh on that four by two relay. Um, along with Amy Canny and, you know, one of their other awesome girls, maybe Gretchen, maybe one of the girls I'm not, you know, accidentally missing out. I think they can win it. I just don't think they win it without the use of Kate Douglas and and uh, Alex Walsh. I think if, if they wanted to win it, they could. I just don't think they'll use the girls that would get the win, which is why I think Stanford end up with a win. Fair enough. Carl, what's your take on this one? I, I really, I like what you had to say. I think I got to go with Stanford as well. Um, if they're if they're using Husk and Curzon on this relay, I think they're pretty dangerous. Um, this is where UVA really take hold of the meat in, in some of these relays. I don't, I don't see anybody touching UVA in in either the first 200 medley relay or the the last relay of the night in the 200 free relay i think they're going to just clean house in these two don't you think thursday's a big day you know you want to open up the meet with a bang especially if you're contending for that title i i think they they could do this this uh 200 medley in record fashion and uh and then again close out the night after winning the 200 im and the 50 freestyle that's that's my early prediction throwing it down on the 200 freestyle relay at the end of it as well. I think they could have four out of five wins on the first night. What about the 500 free? Let's go to that, Sonny. What do you, what's your thoughts on that? My, my other big excitement for this meet is the Texas girls. I think they've got a really good team starting to build. I saw them in Europe at the Mare Nostrum team. Um, I think it's going to be Erica Sullivan and Emma White going down to the wire in that 500. I think, like Sonny said, great call out on fifth seed Emma Wyant. She got, she was the runner up last year. I think she's hungry to win, but I still have to go with uh, what you guys were echoing earlier. I think Texas is really going to own the distance events. I think Erica Sullivan gets it done here. Uh, the next one is the 200 IM, and this is where it becomes kind of a, a race between a couple of teammates, right? Yeah. I mean, I was going to ask you, Brett, you've been in charge of picking teams at this sort of competition. and. 
how much say does Kate Douglas have in like she could basically win potentially the 53 and the 200 iron? They're back to back. You can't swim both of them. You know, we, you've got you've got Kate Douglas and, and Alex Walsh, and then you've got Gretchen in the 50. So it's like you've got all your bases covered. You know what I mean? So it's just a matter of like um, what's best for your team, what's best for your for your women's psychology. You know, like where do you where do you put girls right like there's a lot of planning that goes into this yep. for sure i, I yep. know the coach up at uva has got to be scratching his head he's got three girls in the top eight there's a lot of ways you can play this really like sunny said whether you put kate douglas somewhere else i think mm -hmm. he made i think they made a great decision putting her here um you'll have her on the 200 freestyle relay at the end of the night she'll mm -hmm. test out her speed then i guess they're putting uh putting their faith in gretchen in the 50 uh, she's up against Maggie McNeil in this one. I think Maggie's swimming hot right now, as we all know. Well, Brett, you know my thoughts on the 53. It's just a crapshoot. Anyone in the race can win. And, you know, it's Damn just you. a roll of the dice, right? It's just a roll of the dice. Um, <laughs> Damn you. You get slapped for that. I, I think Gretchen should win, but I think Maggie very much could win. And I think that's a really cop-out answer as well. So, you know. <laughs> Carl, what's your thoughts? You know, I was in Minnesota three years or so ago when Abby Weitzel went that 20.9 and that was some speed. Like I've never seen anything like that. These girls are contending to go faster than that. Um, there's definitely some serious speed here in the field. I think it's a battle of underwaters between Walsh and McNeil. Um, I'll throw out a, a hot prediction here. I'm thinking Maggie McNeil takes it in the prelims and scares everyone and Gretchen Walsh comes firing back at night and uh, takes the win. I think Gretchen gets it because of her length and her height. You know, maybe maybe that might be the only uh, deciding factor here. You know, let's go straight into 4IM. Is anyone going to beat Alex Walsh in this one, Sonny? No. No. I think we just move on. It's, uh, yeah. It's, she's just, yeah, Alex Walsh all day long. She's freaking amazing. Um, and I think it's, that's just a wrap. I think Emma White gets second and maybe Virginia get third as well. I think we all think this, Kyle, but what, what about the dynamic between, um, you know, the the two former teammates as well? You know, one of them that's went exactly to Florida. Was, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to touch on. I think as, as a competitive athlete in the NCAA, it, it's got to hurt when you see your teammate leave. And mm -hmm. I know that those two are definitely friends, but they're definitely competitors at the end of the day as well. Mm -hmm. I have Emma Wyant winning this one, actually. Oh. Uh, you know, she she is amazing in the long course version. We all got to see that on display in Tokyo. And I think she's going to I think she's going to take it. I think she's got something to prove here. She's on a new team and uh, she's she's on a mission. So it should be fun. I'm glad that the NCAA has opened up for this instant action where you don't have to wait a year after transferring. So she's only a sophomore right now. And I think she's going to take the dub. Wow, that's a that's the first major upset right there, huh? Kyle's calling it. Interesting call. I don't. I don't think it's happening, but I like. I like. I like the fact that you're throwing it out there. At least a hundred fly is going to be very, very competitive. This one will be will be tougher to pick. Uh, we've got Kate Douglas, Maggie McNeil, Tori Haas, Claire Crazan. I mean, I'm calling Maggie McNeil. I think Maggie wins this. I think everyone is chasing the wake of Kate Douglas in this. I also see six girls dipping under 50 seconds here. Um, it's it's going to be a fast. It's going to be a fast one. 48-5 for the win, Kate Douglas. 48-5, that's a massive call. This is, this is a tough one. I think ultimately it comes down to who's got the best underwaters, really, and then who's who's the who's the ultimate racer? I think Maggie McNeil. Oh, then we got the 100 breast. The 100 Oof. breast is an interesting race, isn't it? Arguably wow. the race of the meet. Why do you say that? I think that this is uh, where a lot of the storylines come along of the, the two Texas girls chasing the Southern Californian and... Uh, Kind of whoever else can get in the mix and see what happens. I mean, four girls seated to go 57 or faster right now. It should be speedy. Oh, there we go. Jacoby, Lydia, the fast to freeze. Nice. <laughs> Who fast to freeze? Alaska. Alaska's Alaska. winning this one. PB in every time she races. I'm pretty sure she PB'd in like every meet this year. And every time she PBs, it's like an age group record and all sorts. She's great. She's winning this. Very strong, powerful legs. I think she's starting to figure out the short course. It's taking her a little bit of time to kind of really get it down. She's not known for her top end speed, you know, so it's, it, that, that hurts when you're swimming such a short event like this. 
but she's starting to figure it out. And I think she's just, again, I think she's the class of the field being the Olympic champ. So then we go down to the 100 back. The 100 back is an interesting race as well. Oh, what a race. Yeah, lots of Olympians in this one. But if I was, if I am going to pick someone, I think I'm going to, I'm going to go with uh, the NC State girl. I'm going to go with Catherine Burkoff on this one. I think she, I think NC State get a win here. I think I'm going to go Claire, then Catherine, then Gretchen. I, 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 want, to, I want to call something a bit more exciting. Claire for the win. I still think that this is going to be Gretchen Walsh's year. I think she's going to avenge her second place from last year and uh, take down Catherine Burkoff, but it's going to be a, quite the race for sure. Nice. Let's go into the last day because we're going to keep moving here. So last day kicks off with the 200 back this is where it comes down to the the team title you know on this last day you have your you have your we, little speech with your team and, and pick are we skipping the mile i always think about the morning on the last day because okay. that was that was one where i was always like okay i need my 200 back records to pop this morning i need i need some people in top eight so this is where you need to train for the championship you know this is where Cal, this is where Dave Durden separates himself. He does such a great job of... I was just going to say, this was always our special morning. Our right. lethal weapon was our 200 backstrokers. You saw it last year at Pac-12s. Um, I'm sure we'll di yeah. discuss that another time, but yeah. Dave Durden has definitely trained uh, Isabel Stadden well. I think this is going to be a great race between her and Claire Curzon. Yeah, I, I just said, I think Claire is just really good and I think she's going to keep getting quicker so she's 0.2 off that all-time record by beta I think she's going to you know break that and win this race a, a landslide I think this is going to be a dominant victory from a uh, Stanford freshman let's come back to the 1650 didn't Katie Ledecky go 1501 yesterday why is Katie Ledecky 45 seconds quicker than all these girls because <laughs> she's uh the greatest female swimmer in history that's why sonny I think what Sonny was saying, um, there's just some records that are just meant to be untouched. A lot of those Phelps to fly records were untouched for so many years. This Katie Ledecky one is not going to be touched for a long time. Um, big shout out to Kenzie from Alabama here. She toured us around uh, Alabama's pool this summer. She's been swimming amazing this season. Um, should be awesome to see her grow out on a, on a big note. But my former coach up there in Wisconsin, Matt Martinez, I know he's going to be happy. I got Paige McKenna winning this mile. Mm. Holding off Kenzie and Erica. I don't know, Carl. What's your thoughts on the hundred free? It's gonna it's gonna take forty five to win. Like there's there's no doubt about it. Um, I think forty five to win. Um, it's gonna be a battle of underwaters again, just like the fifty freestyle. My gosh, did you see Maggie McNeil's underwaters at SECs on that last wall? Mm. I if if she can replicate that, I think she takes the win. Um, but if there's any slip up, I know that Gretchen Walsh is going to jump on that. So one of those two, I'm actually going to put my money on the underdog here. I'm going to go with Gretchen Walsh. I think I think Maggie McNeil takes the win. I think you're right, Kyle. I think she goes 45, 45, nine for the win, you know, which is which is incredible. Anytime a woman can yeah. go 45. I mean, that's really moving, Sonny. Move on 200 breasts. Here we go. This is interesting. Sonny, thoughts? I, I just I just find Kate Douglas phenomenal, uh, crazily good, and this is going to be a clear victory. Lydia will go a PB. Lydia will get second. But Oh, how is Kate Douglas so good at so much? I wish I knew. I, I wish I knew. I don't even think this is going to be a race. I mean, she's got three seconds on the rest of the field. Okay, what's the next race? Let's go to it. 200 fly. Boom. One, two, hey? Maybe okay. one, two, three. No, sorry. Texas are going one, two, three in this last race. <laughs> one, two, three. One hundred. I don't think I'd, I don't think they're going to go one through three. Um, I think someone's going to slip in there. I can definitely see a one, two finish though. Alex Walsh in a 200 flight is 30th seed. Is she going to be a factor? I think she's going to be in the final and I think she's going to challenge the Texas, but she'll come fourth to the one, two, three. This one, two, three is going to be beautiful. Yes, that would be very interesting. Um, and then you go into the last event of the meet, the 400 free relay, where Virginia have a clear distance on everybody again. Oh yeah. Do uh, Kyle, do you think you think they Virginia win this relay and win the meet at, at this point in time? I don't, I don't, I don't see anyone else coming anywhere close to them. So I mean, they got a great core four, and uh, I think they'll run away. Um, but I, I think ultimately Virginia get the three peak, which is. Crazy, hey? What a team. What a run yeah. they've had. And um, what a championship. 
Kyle, it's pretty pretty strange for us not to be talking about a cow woman in any of these races. Um, is there anyone that we should be thinking of or look out for? I mean, who, who's the superstar of the Cal women's team these days? I think the one to look out for this year, though, is definitely be Isabel Staden in the 2IM and the 200 right. backstroke. Another one would be Leah Polanski in the 200 and 400 IM. All right, boys, I think that's it. We're going to do a prediction show next week. We'll see how we went on the women's side. Uh, good luck to all the women. It's going to be a really cool meet to watch. And, um, yeah, we'll check back in next week and we'll go over the men, hey? Should be awesome to watch. Thanks for having me on. What did we miss? Were there any picks that you guys thought were just completely off? Make sure to comment down below if we missed anything. I'm super fired up to talk all things Cal swimming next week. So make sure to drop all of your spicy predictions for the men's swim meet down below as well. Hey, maybe they'll get included. You never know. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more great collaborations like this one. And a huge shout out to Brett Hawk and the swimsuit guy for inviting me in for this one. And without further ado, I'll see you guys all next week.